Hi guys, this is Josh with Jay Show Horror back again. Today I'm continuing my Final Destination and Evil Dead review series with Final Destination 3. Now definitely hit that like and subscribe button if you love all things horror. This channel is fully dedicated to horror movies. And definitely give me all your thoughts of Final Destination 3 down in the comment section below. Now I have a lot of nostalgia for this installment of the series. This one came out when, when I was in high school in 2006 and I probably saw this three times in the theater so this was another one of those movies I kind of was obsessed with for a little while I absolutely love Final Destination 3 and I love the opening credits again in this movie because it really sets the tone very very well it sets up the vibe and like kind of the dread and everything going forward which they did that in the first movie glad they did that again I love when the opening credits kind of sets the mood and I feel like in today's movies we don't get enough opening credit sequences I absolutely love this opening I love the roller coaster scene I think that scene is so intense and it's so well done and uh, it's gory it's intense and just being on a roller coaster to begin with can be scary and just thinking about it crashing is just so beyond scary it, yeah it's insane love the entire opening I love that they're all at the carnival to begin with and we're introduced to all all these characters and I love Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Wendy I she's an actress I've always liked for as long as I can remember since the early early to mid 2000 she did the black christmas remake the thing prequel uh even one of the die the die hard movies and she is a great actress i think she's a very underrated actress but yeah i think she is part of the reason why i love this movie she's definitely one of my favorites of the series that gets the premonition so i love wendy so much and she could be the main reason why i love this movie so much but i like after Wendy gets the premonition of the insane roller coaster opening, which is so well done. I like that uh, her and Kevin get off the roller coaster. Some other people get off the roller coaster, but her boyfriend Jason and Kevin's girlfriend Carrie, they they're still stuck on it, so they die instantly. That's kind of really sad. That kind of gets you attached to Wendy really quick, and she's like all depressed at school trying to deal with the death of Jason and I think a part of the reason why I love the third movie I think this one's really really suspenseful very intense uh, again I love most of the death scenes in this and I love a lot of the build-up to the death scenes in this and I love that they add another element to this movie that the first two movies don't have. They add the entire element of the Wendy took a bunch of pictures at the carnival. And the pictures are actually signs of like kind of how they die and everything. I love that subplot. It's a, just another great added little thing to this movie. I always like that even though all the Final Destination movies, the, the formula is very, very similar. They add something to it that that makes it diff a little different than the other movies in the series and the whole camera thing definitely was the thing that they went with on this one but it works they had the pictures to look at through the entire movie i have a couple favorite deaths in this movie it's hard to pick because all the deaths are amazing i think in this one but the tanning bed death scene w was so suspenseful there's a lot of buildup to the tanning bed scene and like when the two girls burn alive it's insanity i will never go into a tanning bed in my life like a tanning bed is just like when i get behind a log truck no thank you i will pass that log truck any day of the week i do not want to be behind the log truck i do not want to be in a tanning bed uh, that's one thing i also love ab love about the final destination movies is there's some scenarios where like nope won't do that won't do that in the tanning bed yes i will never get in a tanning bed after this scene just the brutality of it the two girls burning up all the skin popping or like the bubbles of their skin and then them finally burning up like that scene was so gruesome when I first saw that I was in shock like holy cow this series just keeps upping the ending on the death scenes 
And I also really like that Wendy and Kevin kind of, they didn't like you really like each other before they said they were, they just hung out because they both have a boy, they had a boyfriend and girlfriend and they kind of really seemed like they get close there and all this. But even when Kevin and Wendy go to try to, they try to save the, the guy, he's at the gym and they're all working out. Like there's a lot of misdirection there. And then he gets smashed, his head gets smashed by the weights. Another Another amazing kill blew my mind like this whole movie blew my mind just as much as the first movie when it first came out and I I love when Wendy and Kevin go to the it's basically Home Depot but the Aaron and Ian they're both working they're closing the store up and the air Ian's next so they're trying to say be Ian they're trying to tell Ian and Aaron hey what's going on of course they're not having that. They're like, oh, screw you. This ain't real. Forget this. Death is not after us. They save Ian, but then that inevitably caused the effect of maybe my favorite death of the series where Aaron falls back and her face gets slammed up against the nail gun and you see the nails coming out of her face. You see Aaron's eyes like moving to the side. What an amazing kill. It's all practical. I appreciate that kill so much. It's intense. All the buildup, everything leading up to it, it's kind of quick now, but it's a perfect length of, of, of amount of time. You get the amazing shot of Aaron moving with her hand and the nails and everything. Beautiful in a sadistic way, but I that might be my favorite kill of the entire series. I, I might even do a ranking of the kills of the Final Destination series because there's so many great, great kills. And even when they're at the drive-thru, you think, oh, this ain't going to lead to a death. But it leads to Frankie Cheek's death, which he was kind of the one that you wanted to die in this movie. I, he was a dirtbag. He was a perv. And uh, Kevin and Wendy, they jump out of the vehicle and the, the engine smashes all through their vehicle into... Frankie Cheeks' head and then like you got the shot of Frankie Cheeks dead and then they had the added second of the f the fan turning on the engine and then you get Frankie Cheeks' head exploding. Another great kill. And then you get the a really, really fun climax at the end of this movie where Wendy figures out that Ian's going to be the one that causes her death. They try to intervene. They try to figure out who the other girls on the roller coaster was. Of course, one of them was Wendy's sister. Just a really fun climax at this 4th of July celebration or whatever. And I actually like that Wendy kind of intervenes her own death, kind of like Alex kind of did that, all that at the end of the first movie. And another great death when Ian's like yelling at Wendy and the fireworks fly past them and and then the giant thing falls on to Ian McKinley it was kind of like the kill from two but you got you actually see top part of his body come out from underneath just amazing stuff and then the ending the ending shocked me again like this whole movie shocked me I love this movie so much when Wendy her sister and Kevin they're on a train like Wendy's at college now and this is the first time in the series where we have a second premonition Wendy sees the train crash and it's so sad because like I said Wendy's one of my favorites I love Wendy I love Mary Elizabeth Winstead she has a premonition at the end of the movie I thought that was great I thought that was amazing that they did that a nice added twist to the series and to this movie and then they inevitably she realizes that oh another premonition and you realize oh crap everybody's dying in this one you don't even have a shot of even still living longer to try to survive longer and everybody dies Wendy everybody and I thought it was a great twist but kind of sad ending because like I said I actually liked Wendy so much oh, train. oh shit I get just overall this whole movie works for me. This is definitely like up there as my one of my favorites in the series. It might be top one or two. I go kind of back and forth. But I 
This movie came out at the right time. High school, I was obsessed with it for a while, just like I was with some of the Saw movies when I was in high school. But yeah, absolutely love Final Destination 3. Absolutely love the opening with the roller coaster. That's definitely one of the best openings and just a great idea to do it on a roller coaster. I love that there's a premonition at the end of the movie that ended the movie with the train crash and everything. But there's not a whole lot to say about this movie. I just love I just love this one so much and I just want to let you guys know that this movie is kind of special to me like Final Destination 1. It just means a lot. There's some movies that mean a lot to me and this is one of those movies that for some reason means a lot to me. The first scream, Final Destination. There's something about horror that I just love and there's something about this movie I just love but yeah overall I absolutely love Final Destination 3. I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10 the same rating as the first movie. I think there's just as many twists and turns and surprises in this movie as the first one. Guys, go down in the comment section below. Give me all your thoughts on Final Destination 3. And stay tuned. I will be doing Army of Darkness review really, really soon. I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.